So, where do you think we are today? That's right, we've gone for a walk to Sherwood Forest. Learn about Robin Hood and his merry men. Come join us and see the Great Oak and everything else that there is to see. Right, we're leaving the car park now and I'm just going to let you read these signs. It'll be quite funny. Alice taken it and left it in the car for you for later. There you go. In the in the top corner. Yeah. Come on straight on. Stop. Come on. What's in there you Yes. Why is it over there? That's the dogs. So basically they make some choices. The dogs are Yeah. Even Thomas. But they wouldn't keep him. Okay. Thomas. Come on. My turn again. Did you get a chance to read those jokes in the car park at Sherwood Forest Car Park? Some comical ones there, isn't there? Right. Uh, we've entered the main area now and. The first thing I'll explain is that you'll go through the visitor centre, which has a little cafe in it. Not a cheap cafe, but a standard cafe. We'll go through that, and as we go through Sherwood, I'll tell you one or two facts about it.
as you'd expect, the obligatory gift shop. Let's see a bit more about it. You can see there, March to October, more five o'clock, November to February, 4.30. Yep. Go on, man. Come on. Come on, man. See, even Doctor Who makes his appearance now and again. Get your bows and arrows, your swords, your outfits, become Robin Hood, Maid Marion, or Mr. Hoodie. Which I don't seem to remember from the stories, but there you go. Plenty of books about the wildlife, which is one of the things that a lot of people come here for. And equally, if you're after something a little bit of a souvenir, Not exactly the cheapest, but this is how they make the money, how they can look after everything. I must uh, confess, although it's very expensive, that uh, Robin Hood figurine looks very, very nice. Maybe this way. Right, let's go to the blue one, then it's done. For those of you that don't know, Showed Forest is located in Nottinghamshire in England. It's actually a royal forest. It was declared a royal forest because of the association of Robin Hood. The forest itself is over a thousand acres and it has been wooded since the last ice age.
as you might have noticed, there's different coloured signs depending on how long a walk you want to go. So we're taking the blue walk, which is to the Major Oak, which is the one from the stories of Robin Hood. But through that we'll walk through the actual uh, wood itself, the forest of Sherwood, where all this happened. When it comes to the forest itself, there's actually over 900 trees that are over 600 years old in the forest. The reason why these trees have lived for so long is because a long time ago cutting down trees was prohibited in Sherwood Forest. If you was caught you faced prison or to pay a huge fine. The forest is a national nature reserve, which means it's a protected site of scientific interest. The reserve holds the highest concentration of ancient trees in the UK, and this gives researchers the ideal opportunity to understand the habitat that's been in existence for, well, going back to the Ice Age, On top of that, the reserve has 200 types of spiders, 1500 species of beetles, which means for researchers, this is a fantastic site to watch through. You can see why it'd be easy for men on horseback to be ambushed in this sort of place. You could be two foot away and not be seen at all. And no doubt it was even thicker in those days than it is now. In medieval times, it was common for people to be attacked on the roads through Sherwood. Many ex-soldiers who'd fallen on hard times, people wanting a little bit of extra money. The friars, the monks in the area would be the wealthiest people in the region and they would have to travel on horseback through this area. It's known that a person called Robert Hood, which I'll mention at the end of this video, did exactly that. He was an ex-soldier, he had been on hard times, along with his wife, whose nickname was Marion, they would actually stay in the forest, apart from during winter time, because in the winter, no soldiers came looking for you, so you could go home. Now, Sherwood Forest isn't as big as it used to be. It was part of the royal hunting ground for the king, and only the king, another nobility like the Archbishop, Archbishop of York, were allowed to go hunting. Many of those who fell on hard times saw all these deer running around, food that they couldn't find for their own family, so they became outlaws. 
getting food to put on the table. You can see where there'd be places in the forest where somebody could stop and have a camp. Bearing in mind that this used to be enormous compared to what it is now. If you just want to have a look around the place, there are miles and miles of hiking routes. Some that you can do on bike, some it's just foot. There's plenty of ways, places to look around. You can see from here that nowadays farms come up to parts of the forest, whereas all this land here would have been forest for centuries. It's said, in fact, that Sherwood Forest took up almost a fifth of England. And that's not likely to be exactly correct, but it was certainly bigger than it is today. It was such a dense and a place full of small villages, small hamlets, uh, the odd town and city, but in essence, one huge, densely vegetated area, the perfect place for thieves to hide. The forest has everything that somebody in medieval times needed to live on. Food, water, coverage, apart from during the winter months, then it was the most inhospitable place you could be. This place is home to such a wide variety of wildlife, insects and creatures. As you can read from there, Sherwood is in the middle of the UK, which means it's an important mixture of southern and northern species, some which are very rare and threatened nowadays. Many species, such as the endangered oak polypore fungus, and various darling scavengers and beetles, are now only found in this sort of area of the world. You're not allowed to camp, have barbecues or anything like that and picnics are only allowed in the specified areas because of the fact that so much of this is unique forest. The reason why so much went was in the 16th, 17th, 18th centuries when big strong oak ships were being built. This is the sort of place that they came from, they would look for them that were thick and strong. I mean, you look at some of these trees, they are straight up, a lot of them. So easier to manufacture into beams that are needed on big ships. And that's why so many were cut down. And then farming became the main way. More and more of the land disappeared. even now some of these trees I mean this are the ones you can tell are newer but you see the odd one in the distance it is huge you got to imagine that a lot of them were in that case a lawful lot just look at the bases of some of these imagine that straight up that would have been the perfect sort of thing to use for a ship wouldn't it
As I'm sure you already know, Britain had the largest navy of its type from the 16th, 17th and even into the early 18th century. And they were all made of wood. So forests were used, found, the trees cut down and a number of forests disappeared totally. And those that didn't disappear were used to get the strongest, tallest, straightest trees with the widest trunks to produce these strong battleships. And that tended to be the older trees. So a lot of the older trees was destroyed, taken down. And that's what destroyed a lot of forests in that time. Archaeologists have even seen sites that on the forest that used to be a Viking. This place has been used for so many centuries. If you're enjoying this video and you want to see more of this sort of walking about and just seeing what England's all about, please do like the video. And if you want to see more, subscribe. It costs you nothing and it helps me. I'd also like any comments. YouTube love comments. One thing that you do notice when walking through the forest is that the organisation of this place has meant that there are paths that anybody can use. It's not a situation you're walking over dense woodlands and rubbly paths. If you came with a pushchair, you can quite easily push the pushchair over here. It's just nice flat ground. If you notice the little tent there, you'll have seen one or two of them as I've walked around. During the summer months, they do little uh, craft centres where you can learn skills, even to the extent of learning how to photo take photos of wildlife better. One of the main things that people come to see with the Gadshode Forest is the Major Oak. It's an iconic feature of Shode Forest and it's known through the stories uh, as a place where Robin Hood actually went to hide. Therefore it attracts an awful lot of tourists just to see that. The true age of the Major Oak is not known but it's estimated to be up to about 1100 years old. This is because the tree has been around from the time of the Vikings. It's seen Shakespeare, Charles Dickens, Darwin, Newton, two world wars. The tree has also got one other major thing. It is the biggest tree in Britain. It's actually believed that the tree originally was three trees that grew into each other when they were very, very young. And that's why it is such a wide trunk. Although they're not 100% certain on that. Now everybody's heard that Robin Hood stole from the rich and gave to the poor. 
that's probably a massive exaggeration. There are two main characters in history that could have been Robin Hood. In ancient times, the word Robert was often shortened to Robin, like Edward to Eddie. So if somebody was called Robert, the nickname was Robin. The second fault in history is it's very unlikely that he came from a place called Loxley in Yorkshire. There are two main characters who could have been Robin Hood. One of us, Robert Hood, and he was from Yorkshire. He knew a person called Will Scarlet. He was of a time before the stories of Robin Hood. However, he fits an awful lot of the criteria. From the place where he died, being the same place in the Robin Hood story, you may remember in the films him dying on a bed and shooting an arrow out of the window and saying, bury me there. Well, this story could be true of this Robin because he was an archer. But it doesn't fit with the story of Richard the Lionheart. Everything else seems to fit, but not that. Robert Hood was an archer. This wasn't uncommon in those days, as it was a common skill to be taught to every boy as he grew up. His wife's name, although not Marion, she could well have been known as Marion, as that was a common nickname at that time. Also, he knew a gentleman called Will Scarlet who was, to say the least, a rogue. He was a thief, an outlaw. On top of that, he also knew somebody called Little John. Now, it's believed this was nothing to do with the size of the person, but more of the type of theft that he was involved with. Robert had been involved in the War of the Roses. He had lost, and the Sheriff of Nottingham had been involved in negotiations, allowing the soldiers to continue on their lives after losing the war. They had to serve patents and work for him for a bit. Robert was known to have in the time between losing the war and being given that penitence to become an outlaw to feed his family. He then joined to work for the sheriff and is believed to have been injured. On top of that, in the stories, it is stated that he died and shot an arrow out of the window of a building where he would be nursed. The person who nursed this Robert, just like in the story of Robin Hood, said to have left him to die there from his injuries. This person was actually related to the woman that we know as Marion. It was her sister. So we've got a situation where a man goes into the forest to provide food for his family. He then has to become part of this sheriff's thing where it means he's away from his wife. He gets injured, taken to a hospital of sorts, basically um, nuns and helpers. And he's left in the corner of room to die, not looked after. So there's a lot going for this Robert Hood. Which, as I say, Robert, the nickname was Robin. He knew the right outlaws. We know for a fact that he actually 
had to survive in Sherwood Forest for a while. But he never had anything to do with Richard the Lionheart because he was from a time before then. And also, he wasn't from nobility. He'd never lost any lands. He was a soldier that had to become an outlaw. But everything else fits. But there is one other person. The second possibility was a gentleman that was in Richard the Lionheart's time and was from Semini nobility. And that was a gentleman called Robert Odo. Now, he wasn't from English descent. He was from the French descent. And his surname by locals could quite easily have been pronounced as Hud. Because Odo was a very close pronunciation. And that's what they believed happened. He was from a place called Loxley as well. Which Robin Hood is supposed to be from. But from Warwickshire, different Loxley. He lost his land. Ended up fighting with Richard the Lionheart. And when he came back, the land had been taken. When Richard finally came back to the UK. uh, Sorry, Britain as it was then. That's when he got his land back, but for a time, he was destitute, lost all his land. And this is where the Sheriff of Nottingham came in, because he was the one who helped take it. He was not friends with the Sheriff of Nottingham at all. So those are two people who could have been Robin Hood. Both of them fit the criteria and if we think about it those two stories merged together you've got the story of Robin Hood but there's a third possibility here because Robin Hood became known the term as somebody to do with thieving throughout the UK there are places called Robin Hood Robin Hood's Bay Robin Hood's well. They are places where criminals could quite easily have operated. So are we talking two stories merged together plus a little bit extra? Or is the Robin Hood Bay, etc. from one of those stories? Well, we'll never really know. But that's where people believe Robin Hood came from a real person my thoughts are that the first option is more likely with a touch of the second one being thrown in by storytellers years later what do you think you tell me who you think Robin Hood was in the comments right there's a video coming up now I would love you to have a watch of And I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.